student friends uh, now we'll uh, discuss about the uh, diffraction of x-rays by crystals and now uh, we will discuss uh, the bragg's law means we derive the uh, bragg's uh, condition in my earlier uh, lectures uh, we have seen uh, the concept of the reciprocal lattice we have understood how to construct the uh, reciprocal lattice and we have uh, discussed uh, the properties of uh, reciprocal uh, lattice and we have uh, shown that the reciprocal lattice of body centered uh, cubic lattice is uh, face centered cubic lattice and the reciprocal lattice of uh, face centered uh, cubic lattice is uh, a body centered uh, cubic lattice now we'll uh, discuss about the diffraction of x rays by uh, crystals we know that uh, the x rays uh, are nothing but the electromagnetic waves and uh, these are electromagnetic radiations having the wavelength of the order of uh, one angstrom unit so if you uh, know the production of x rays by a coolidge tube uh, we have uh, seen there uh, how the x rays are produced and what are the properties of x rays what are continuous x rays and what are the characteristics x rays so uh, x rays are nothing but uh, electromagnetic radiations and these radiations have wavelength very short wavelength of the order of one angstrom uh, unit and the scientist uh, max von law in uh, 1912 uh, it is a, a german physicist showed that x rays can be uh, diffracted uh, using a single uh, crystal because we know that uh, the ordinary light can be uh, diffracted by uh, using a plane diffraction uh, grating and we know the construction of the plane diffraction uh, grating however since uh, the wavelength of x rays are very uh, small they are in very small uh, they are of the very small order that is uh, of the order of one angstrom unit Uh, plane diffraction grating cannot be used to study the diffraction of uh, x rays however the scientist uh, max uh, von law uh, showed that the diffraction of x rays can be studied by using a single uh, crystals and we know that uh, in a uh, crystal the atoms are arranged in regular and periodic uh, three dimensional geometric pattern and the distance between uh, two consecutive atoms uh, is also uh, very small it is uh, of the order of uh, 1 to 2 uh, angstrom unit and if you look at the inter uh, planar spacing uh, or perpendicular distance between the atomic planes in the crystal then that distance is also of the order of uh, 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 angstrom unit now here uh, max von law showed that this uh, single crystal will acts as a three dimensional uh, national uh, natural uh, diffraction grating uh, to study the diffraction of uh, x rays so he had performed one uh, simple experiment and uh, by performing that experiment uh, he had uh, studied the uh, diffraction of uh, x rays uh, for which uh, Uh, he had been awarded uh, a nobel uh, laureate uh, nobel prize so what uh, he studied so he uh, consider a beam of uh, continuous x rays and beam of continuous x rays is made incident on this uh, single crystal so this is the a uh, single uh, crystal we know that single crystal has uh, uh, regular and periodic arrangement uh, Uh, over the infinite uh, distance and uh, such a single crystal is used to study uh, the diffraction grating uh, we are going to actually discuss in detail how uh, put this diffraction is possible uh, which uh, uh, had been studied by the scientist uh, uh, brags so here uh, in law method a uh, beam of continuous x rays which contains uh, uh, the x rays uh, in the wavelength range of 0.2 angstrom minute to 2 angstrom minute so such a beam of uh, continuous x rays is made incident on the single crystal in which uh, there is a regular and periodic arrangement of uh, atoms and from these uh, 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 atomic planes 
or we can call it as a crystal planes, the X-rays get uh, diffracted. So what is how they are uh, diffracted? That also we are going to discuss. And they are diffracted from different planes. And each diffracted uh, X-ray will uh, produce a spot on the photographic film strip. So these are the spots, such type of spots they are observed on this uh, diffraction uh, on this photographic uh, film. And from the symmetry of these uh, uh, spots, uh, it is possible to study uh, to which uh, crystal structure that particular material uh, belongs that can be studied. However, there is also a central uh, dark spots you can observe actually uh, in the diffraction pattern obtained by law method. Actually, we are going to discuss in detail the law method in the next uh, lectures. So that is how this law uh, studied the diffraction of uh, X-rays by using a single crystals. Uh, he showed that a single crystal will act as a, a three-dimensional natural diffraction a grating. So this phenomenon uh, has been discovered by the scientist uh, uh, Max von Lau in 1912. So actually, if you uh, look at uh, the crystal, we know that in crystal, the atoms are arranged in a regular and a periodic uh, three-dimensional geometric pattern. I have shown he here the two-dimensional uh, pattern. And we know that each atom has a, a central nucleus and it is surrounded by uh, uh, electrons uh, with the different numbers in different orbit uh, that we know the basic uh, uh, thing about the construction of the atom. So, uh, so this is nothing but actually the arrangement of uh, atoms, regular and periodic arrangement of uh, atoms. And because of this uh, regular and periodic arrangement of atoms, we can consider uh, sets of parallel planes. So, this is a, a uh, um, atomic plane. So, this is another atomic plane. It is parallel. So, again, this is atomic plane parallel. So, these are the. This is one set of parallel planes. We can consider large number of sets of parallel planes. So, how actually the uh, diffraction of uh, X-rays uh, uh, take place when uh, beam of X-rays is made incident on this uh, atomic plane? So, actually, when uh, beam of uh, X-ray is uh, incident on this uh, atom, what actually happens uh, is that uh, when this uh, uh, beam of electron is incident on this atom, means it is incident on the electron, and uh, there is a certain frequency of uh, vibration of this uh, uh, beam of X rays so that this electron begins to vibrate with the same frequency as that of the incident radiation. And we know that when charged particle, this is electron, this happens in all, uh, all electrons, when it begins to oscillate, we know that it emits a, a radiation, oscillating charged particle, it emits the radiation, means this electron acts as a secondary source and it emits the radiations of uh, uh, different uh, frequencies, uh, uh, sorry, of the same frequency as that of the incident radiation in uh, uh, all directions. And that is how we can say that the diffraction of X-rays is occurred. So here we can call it as uh, scattering of X-rays or it is also called as the reflection of X-rays. So in case of X-rays, the words diffraction and reflection, they are taken more or less similarly. So that uh, one should remember. In this way, uh, the uh, diffraction of uh, X-rays uh, uh, that uh, takes place from these uh, uh, atoms. So that is the basic uh, theory, how the uh, X-rays, they are diffracted from the atomic planes. So we know that uh, in atomic planes, there are large number of atoms which are arranged in parallel, uh, uh, which are arranged uh, somewhat like this uh, as shown uh, here. So this is the uh, basic idea regarding the diffraction of X-rays by crystals. Now we are going to uh, study uh, the condition which is responsible for uh, the diffraction of X-rays. Or what is that condition uh, which uh, tells us that uh, the diffracted or reflected x-rays uh, will be uh, having the uh, maximum uh, intensity. And that condition is uh, uh, given or derived by the scientist Bragg. And therefore, we'll discuss now here the uh, Bragg's law. So Bragg's law we are going to discuss. Actually, Bragg has given condition of the diffraction. And that is also important. And here, uh, one thing uh, I would like to mention is that uh, the scientist uh, W.H. Bragg and W.L. Bragg uh, these uh, 
father and son uh, they jointly they have been awarded uh, again a nobel prize for their uh, discovery of this the bragg's uh, condition so we know that uh, uh, in uh, crystal the atoms are arranged in a regular and periodic uh, three dimensional uh, geometric pattern so i have shown here this is a two dimensional arrangement of atoms so uh, this is a regular and periodic arrangement of the atoms in uh, two dimensional geometric pattern i have considered here now we can consider uh, the set of parallel planes so i have considered one set of parallel planes so this atomic planes form a set of a parallel plane and adjacent parallel plane is like this next plane parallel to this plane is like this and we know that the perpendicular distance between uh, these planes is called as the interplanar spacing so this is the interplanar uh, spacing corresponding to this set of parallel uh, planes and we call d as the interplanar spacing now uh, let us assume that a beam of monochromatic uh, x rays is a mere incident on these uh, atomic planes so that uh, the beam of monochromatic x rays i have considered this two rays so is incident on these atoms at this uh, places o and o dash so as uh, explained as I, I, I just have explained here the electrons they begin they will begin to vibrate and they will uh, emit the uh, radiations because they will act as a secondary source uh, and therefore these uh, uh, x rays will get uh, you can call it as diffracted or you can call it as reflected from these uh, atomic uh, planes like this and uh, suppose this uh, theta is the angle made by incident uh, x ray with respect to crystal plane and this angle is called as a glancing angle actually theta is called as a glancing angle so it is the angle made by the incident x ray with respect to a crystal plane and uh, if you draw here the normal to this uh, uh, crystal plane then according to laws of reflection this angle will also be equal to uh, theta so this this theta is called as the uh, glancing angle angle made by the incident x ray with respect to the crystal uh, plane now actually we have to find the condition uh, uh, it is a bragg's condition which will uh, tell us uh, what is that condition when the ref uh, reflected or diffract or the diffracted x rays will have maximum intensity now uh, in order to uh, actually we have to find out the path difference between the uh, these two rays so in order to calculate the path difference uh, uh, between the rays let us draw od perpendicular to this ro dash so this is the uh, perpendicular so this is the right angle so i can show this is the right angle and let us again draw this uh, uh, oe perpendicular to o dash yes so this is again right angle so this is right angle and this is right angle and by geometry we can uh, show that uh, since this angle is theta this will be 90 minus theta and again it will be theta because this is 90 degree so this will be theta this angle will be theta and this also angle will be theta so if you look at the uh, path difference between uh, these uh, two rays then obviously this uh, d o dash plus o dash e will be the path difference between these two rays so if you calculate the path difference that is the pa path difference path difference between path difference between two rays the path difference between the two rays that is uh, p o and r o dash as uh, incident rays and reflected uh, rays are o q and o dash yes then this path difference uh, it will be equal to you can call it as this is nothing but d o dash plus it is nothing but o dash e so this will be the path difference now if you have, if you look at this uh, right angle triangle uh, that means angle o d o dash so this is a right angle triangle so in this uh, right angle triangle this uh, o o dash uh, will be the hypotenuse 
and this angle is theta. So in order to calculate this uh, uh, distance uh, do dash, which is the path difference, obviously that uh, uh, distance uh, will be uh, because uh, by using this uh, sine theta is equal to, we'll get this as do dash uh, divided by this o o dash. So do dash, uh, this implies d o dash is equal to o o dash is d and into this sine theta. So you will get this uh, d o dash is equal to this is nothing but d sine theta. Similarly, if you look at the right angle triangle o e o dash, you will again get this o dash e also equal to d sine theta. So total path difference it will equal to 2d sin theta. So once you have calculated uh, uh, the path difference uh, between the two rays, it will be 2 dy, uh, 2d sin theta. D is the uh, interplanar spacing corresponding to that set of parallel plane and theta is the glancing angle, angle made by the incident x-ray with respect to the crystal plane. So that one has to remember, it is a glancing angle. Then we have to put the condition of the constructive interference. Then and then only these two reflected uh, rays will be in phase. And so that uh, they will be having a maximum intensity. So, and if lambda is the, if lambda is the incident of, if lambda is wavelength of, if lambda is wavelength of incident x-rays, then the condition for constructive or reinforce uh, constructive interference, we can call it as or condition of reinforcement will be this 2d sine theta must be equal to n lambda. So this is the condition for the reinforcement of the diffracted x-rays. We call it as a condition of constructive interference. So if this condition is satisfied by this uh, 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 reflected uh, um, X-rays or diffracted X-rays, then and then only they will be in phase. That means their intensity will be maximum. So this condition is called as the Bragg's condition, and this condition is very important. Bragg's condition, or it is called as Bragg's law. So this condition is very very uh, important, and using this condition, we can find the uh, so many things regarding the uh, crystal. We can find the structure of the crystal. We can find the interplanar spacing. We can find the interatomic distance. We can uh, determine the in, uh, wavelength of X-ray using this condition. So, so many uh, things uh, we can uh, find out using this equation. And this equation is very important in the uh, branch of physics, which is called as the condensed matter of physics. So, this is the Bragg's condition. Again. One more thing we, uh, we would like to uh, note is that we know that here uh, sine theta, sine theta is uh, always less than equal to 1. So we know that sine theta is less than or equal to 1. Hence, to this condition will be uh, uh, true only when you can write this as lambda is less than equal to 2D. So, in order to occur the diffraction or reflection of X-rays, uh, this condition is very important. Means wavelength of uh, uh, X-rays uh, should be less than or equal to twice the internal planar uh, spacing. Then and then only you will observe the uh, reflection or uh, diffraction of the X-rays. And this condition uh, we have to uh, note down that is the lambda wavelength of X-rays should always be less than or equal to 2D for the uh, diffraction of uh, X-rays. So in this way, uh, we can derive this uh, uh, Bragg's law, uh, which is very important. Uh, and uh, I think you might have uh, enjoyed this uh, lecture. If you have uh, liked uh, this lecture, don't uh, forget to subscribe my channel by pressing uh, the button in the right corner, like uh, below corner. Uh, so that uh, you will get uh, more and more interested uh, lectures uh, in physics in uh, coming future. Thank you for watching this lecture.